Hi, welcome to Inspiration Retreats with Shari. I'm your host, Shari, and I am so delighted that you're here with us again this week. June 20th, um, I tell you this year is fleeting by, and God has another word for you. This week, God has a word for you. I tell you, I've been through so much this week, but God, to God be the glory. He has me here. He is the one keeping me. He is keeping you. He is providing for us. He is giving us everything that we need. So all you have to do is rely on Him. Cast all your care onto Him because He truly cares for you. He loves you. If no one has let you know, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. So let's jump into God's Word. But before we do this week, as always, let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you right now for every good and perfect gift that you give to us, that you have given us life. And Father God, in Jesus, you give us life more abundantly. And Father, right now, I ask you to take these lips and let them be lips used for it, the instrument used for your glory. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, God. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. I count on you, Father God. And Lord, let your people hear your word and forever be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you again for being here. And I do say God bless you. Bless you because you're here. Bless you because you want to hear the word of God. And God bless you because you want to know more about Him. I ask Him to bless you upon blessings with His word, with His favor, with His divine anything that you need. Healing. Healing it covers all aspects. So I ask Him to bless you because you're seeking after Him. He said in His Word, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. All of these things, that is healing, salvation, is provision, it is everything. Mended relationships, it is joy, it is peace, it is just everything that you could even ask for. Actually, more than you can ask for or what you can even think about. God is that good to you. So grab your Bible and let's go to the book of Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. We're going to go into verse 9. And we're going to read the 35th through the 38th verses. But our focus verse for today is Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it says, Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. God has a message for you today. It's harvest time. Look to somebody, look to yourself, look in the mirror and say, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. God is saying he has a job opening for you. You go around and you see different help wanted signs, or you may look in a newspaper or on the internet and see help wanted. Jesus is saying there is a help wanted sign for Christians. Your help is to do the will of the Lord. And His will is that none shall perish, that, but that all shall come unto repentance. And so in order for them to come unto repentance, they have to hear the word of God. And so your job, my job, is to share the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus Christ, His saving grace. We are to share that. And so, yes, Jesus said to his disciples that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. So let's back up for a moment and focus in on point number one on that 35th verse. And it reads, 9th chapter of Matthew, 35th verse. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease, every disease among the people. So, <laughs> Jesus, He is our great physician. He is our healer. He went about to every city, every village, healing all. Healing, that healing again is not just a physical healing, it's a spiritual healing, it's a soul healing, and it's mental healing. It's every kind of healing that you can think of. Healing, whatever is ailing you, what 
whatever is diseasing you, whatever is it, put you in a, a place of dis-ease, God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal every area of your life. I thank the Lord because He is a healer. He's a healer of our physical bodies. And I'm standing here to let you know that as a, a witness of His. He is a healer. He is a healer of your mind. He is a healer of your family. He is a healer of friendships. He is a healer of provision. He is a healer in every aspect of your life. Catch that today. Really put it into your heart and know that He is a healer. Hallelujah. Now it says in that 35th verse that Jesus went about all the cities and villages. We are to go about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, teaching in the places where they learn teaching in the places of their homes, teaching in wherever you are. Let it be in the bank line, be in the grocery line, be in the gas line, be it wherever you are. We are supposed to have Jesus Christ on our mind all the time because truly the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Won't you be a laborer today? It's harvest time. Now, Matthew 24, 14 tells us that and this gospel, that's the good news, of the kingdom, which is salvation, shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What Jesus is saying is, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was going and healing people. He was teaching in their synagogues. But what he was preaching was the kingdom, the salvation salvation is yours today all you have to do is believe on jesus christ and be saved hallelujah there's such an urgency behind that the urgency is we don't know the day we don't know the minute or the hour and we don't even know when our time to die comes all we know is this that when we are in christ jesus we are eternally saved you are in the ark of safety when you are in Jesus. You can't predict when the world is going to end. You can't predict when things are going to happen in your life. Right now, one thing is happening and the next minute something else can be happening that you didn't plan on. But when you're in Jesus Christ, He will heal every area of your life. And He will give you eternal life. So you have no need to worry, no need to fret, no matter what's going on. Hallelujah. There's an urgency. I'm reaching out right now to my fellow Christians. There's an urgency that Jesus has for us. He's pressing on us to lock together arm in arm and heart to heart so that men and women, boys and girls know who He is. We're not to be ashamed of the gospel. We are to go full force. Hallelujah. And just this day, I got a text message from someone who didn't even know what God had for me to preach on this day, but it confirmed what he was putting in her heart is the same thing he's putting in my heart. So we are to go full force, letting others know there is an urgency, an urgency. Feel that fire behind you. If there was a fire chasing you right now, then you would be running, you would be going. And right now there's an urgency. That fire is pushing on each and every one of us. Not to just sit back and relax in our own salvation. Well, I'm going to heaven anyhow. Not to sit back in our own salvation, but to tell others. Have an urgency, a quickness about us. Because Jesus, he's looking for laborers. Mm. Yes, he's seeking those that are lost. But once you're saved, then we're to be laborers. We're co-laborers with Christ Jesus. He, yes, he could do it all. But he has given us the great commission that we are to go. We are to go into all the world teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Point two. Let's look at verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He had compassion on them. When you see others, do you have compassion? Do you have compassion for them? Do you want them to know Jesus like you know Jesus? Do you want them to be saved? Do you want them to be snatched away from a burning hell? Have compassion on people. 
Jesus Christ, he's a God of compassion. Have compassion today for your fellow man. Now, he said they were like a sheep without a shepherd. Or sheep without a shepherd. These sheep without a shepherd are people who are lost. People who don't even know that they don't know what they need to know about Jesus Christ. And so, they need a shepherd. Jesus Christ, he is the good shepherd. He is our shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He laid down his life for the sheep. I'm a sheep. You're a sheep. People who are lost are sheep. But when he says the laborers are few, but the harvest is plenteous, that harvest are lost souls. Those sheep out there, he had compassion on them because they were going to and fro, scattered all about. When the sheep are scattered and they don't have a shepherd, then the, that wolf can come and get them. The, that tragedy can come and suck them up. And so Jesus Christ, he is the good shepherd. We are to let others know about Jesus, the good shepherd. Hallelujah. The good shepherd died for the sheep. Now, he is also the great shepherd. He not only died for the sheep, he gave salvation to the sheep. So he gives us everything that we need. He provides for the sheep. And then he said he's going to return again. And he is considered the chief shepherd. Now, the good shepherd you can find in John 10, 14. The great shepherd you can find in Hebrews 13, 20. And then the chief shepherd you can find in 1 Peter 5 and 4. Our third point, which is our focus scripture. Then saith he unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Why don't you join today? Join his saints and be a laborer, a co-laborer with Jesus Christ. He said in his word in Matthew 28, 18, which is called our great commission. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, not a little bit of power, not some power, a great amount of power. No, he said, all power is given unto him. He says in his word, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's everywhere. Go ye. That's for you and me. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That means Jesus is with us. He's telling us to go, but he's also with us. It's so good because he's in you. When you have him in your heart, he is with you everywhere you go. Mm. So in conclusion, looking at verse 38, he said, Pray ye to his disciples. We're his disciples also. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Are you praying right now? Are you praying that others come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ and then want to work for Him? Not just sit back and relax, but truly work for Him. Letting others know who He is. Letting others know what He is doing. He is our salvation. He is our hope. No matter what's going on, it's harvest time. Get ready, people. It's harvest time. Get an urgency about you. It's harvest time. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, right now is the time to accept Him. This is your invitation. Receive Jesus Christ. As the Holy Spirit touches your heart and you listen to this message today, allow Him to come into your heart. Allow Jesus to come into your heart and save you. If you allow him this day, because the choice is yours, he won't force himself on you. He won't do anything to coerce you. You have to have a willing heart, willing, willingly accept him and what he did on the cross at Calvary, where he, he suffered for us. He bled for us. He died for us. And then on the third day, he was resurrected. For us, we have newness of life because of Him. Accept this new life. Accept Jesus Christ today. Be part of the harvest and then become a laborer. 
God loves you so much. Say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. And I accept you as my Savior. Father God, touch me right now. Quicken in my spirit who you are and everything that your Son has done. Not that I have it in my mind, but I have it in my heart so that I can live it out in my life. Father God, I ask you to change me. I repent of every sin that I've sinned against you, Father. I ask you now to make Jesus the Lord of my life, and I receive him. If you said that simple and humble prayer, God heard it, and you are saved. Now, he asks you to get into a great Bible teaching church, so you continue to learn about his word. Read his word daily. Pray to Him constantly and know that He loves you so much.